Problem Solvers Caucus. He's fabulous. He's a vice chair of that caucus. He's so smart. He's Congressman Dusty Johnson. Congressman, it's great to see you again. So the media is going berserk over this. Former President Trump said he would accept the House speakership for a, quote, 30 to 60 to 90 day period. I mean, can he even do that? The media is going hog wild over this. I don't, and listen, every leader's got different strengths. Not every leader is a great fit in every leadership position. Liz, I've had three different speakers of the House tell me that the ability to listen to your members is the most important skill for a speaker of the House. I'm not sure that's President Trump's strong suit. I think he would also struggle to get 218 votes. We've got to have somebody that basically isn't a problem with anybody in the House. That's how tight uh, the margins are on the Republican side. Congressman, who would you want? I mean, it's Steve Scalise, Jim Jordan, you know, maybe Patrick McHenry, Tom Cole, Kevin Hearn. Who do you like? The two guys who are announced uh, officially and running strong right now, Steve Scalise from Louisiana, uh, and then uh, also uh, we've got Jim Jordan from Ohio. They're both very capable leaders. I, I haven't picked from among them yet. Of course, I've talked to them both at length today. I expect I'll talk to them both tomorrow. I think a bigger issue, though, Liz, is that if we don't fix the underlying dysfunction within this Republican House, none of this matters. Uh, a new speaker is just, uh, if we don't change the rules, is just the same stupid clown car with a different driver. Uh, we've got some work to do before we just settle on a leader. How do you fix it then? I think we've got to get back to a situation where these eight holdouts, these hardliners, that's just 4% of our conference. These are the guys who sided with the Democrats to rip down Republican control of the House. We've got to get back to where they understand that they need to have as much drive toward improving the country as they have had toward chaos. When we were working together, we were able to get $2 trillion in spending cuts just over the next four or five years. We were able to get major improvements to how we permit energy projects. We were able to get major changes to work requirements for welfare programs. Those were all signed into law. Now, it did require that we build a, a consensus that went from the far right all the way to including the Democrats. That's not easy to do, but it's going to be a lot harder if we're fighting and clawing and snarling at one another. So hopefully there will be unity because we got 40 days to another you know, government shutdown. And we got reports also coming in. Former President Trump may come to Capitol Hill to meet with Republican leaders about the race for speakership. And then let's move on to this. You know, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi now out of her special office in the Capitol. I know this has been a nasty fight on, on Capitol Hill. Did the order come from Kevin McCarthy? I mean, do the House rules indicate that that room is redesignated for the Speaker's office use? So the media should not overreact about this. Pelosi should not overreact about it. She should have given it up because it is for the incoming Speaker? There has been a lot of overreaction to this. You said it exactly right. Listen, the Speaker of the House gets to control space within the House side of the Capitol. And, and they don't owe anybody anything. And so Kevin McCarthy gave some people uh, office space. It has occasionally been, occasionally been traditional for former speakers to be able to keep a little, a, a one-room office, a hideaway, they're called, in the Capitol. But that's not written anywhere. That is, that is not an entitlement that Nancy Pelosi owns. Uh, the new speaker, uh, pro tem, Patrick McHenry, decided he wanted to reallocate some space. That's the kind of things that speakers do every single month when they're speaker. Uh, listen, I, this is, uh, I know Nancy Pelosi's upset about it, but that was not her space forever and ever uh, and ever on that. Congressman, you're, you've got a lot of integrity. You want to help America, you want to serve America, you want to fix America, you want to fix the problems. We see that, and we hope you come back on again soon so we could talk more. Absolutely, anytime. Good.